When I teach recording, I like to start with the physical properties of sound. When I ask my students what sound is, they come up with answers such as noise, the vibration of air, the movement of waves, signals, or even language. Specifically, sound is a compression wave which results from the back and forth vibration of the atoms of the medium through which the sound is moving. Although we usually graph waves so it looks like they're going up and down, the graph is actually indicating the positive and negative pressure over time, not the movement of individual atoms. The atoms are bumping into each other, creating oscillations of high and low pressure. Compressions are regions of high pressure, tightly spaced atoms, while refractions are regions of low pressure, loosely spaced atoms. In digital audio, we map sound pressure level from negative one to positive one. Negative one refers to the lowest pressure we are recording, while positive one refers to the highest pressure. The tagline for the movie Aliens is, in space, no one can hear you scream. Space is a vacuum, meaning there aren't any atoms. Unlike light, sound needs a medium of transmission. Without atoms, there is no sound. The speed of sound changes according to the medium it's transmitted through. Denser materials transmit sound faster. In air, sound travels at 800 miles per hour, water, 3,000 miles per hour, and steel, 13,000 miles per hour. When it's humid, sound travels faster because the air is denser. In English, we have a saying, keep your ear to the ground. It means to pay close attention to your surroundings. The origins of this phrase are actually based in physics. You can hear better through a solid than through the air. If you watch an old Western movie, you'll see the characters put their ear to the ground in order to listen. It's possible to hear horses galloping from the vibrations in the earth before you would hear the sound transmitted in the air. Large changes in pressure result in louder sounds, while small changes in pressure result in softer sounds. When we record audio, we're recording these changes in pressure. One of the most important steps in recording is setting the recording level. When we set the recording level, we are telling the equipment how much positive pressure corresponds to positive one, and how much negative pressure corresponds to negative one. You would not use the same level to record a rock band as you would to record a whisper in a library. Zero always represents silence or zero movement, but one and negative one are a scaled representation of the amount of pressure. Loudness decreases as a function of distance. In a quiet library, a whisper at a distance of six feet is approximately six decibels. A rock concert is 115 decibels, and pain begins at 125 decibels. You can use the same equipment to record the whisper as the rock concert, but you have to set your levels correctly. When recording, you want the loudest sound possible to get as close to one and negative one without going over. If the whisper is usually five dB, but has moments where it is seven dB, you have to set the level so that the seven dB matches one and negative one in order to prevent the sound from clipping. If you're recording the rock concert, you would want 115 decibels to correspond to one and negative one. If you set your recording level so that 5 dB is the highest pressure that it can record, what happens at 7 dB? The equipment only lets you record from negative 1 to 1, so anything above 5 dB gets mapped to 1. This creates a horizontal line on the waveform. We're not able to measure the change in pressure from 5 to 7, and so the information gets lost. We're not able to measure accurately, which means we can't reproduce the sound accurately. It's very easy to hear this clipping. The sound gets distorted. And this is why I think clipping is the first deadly sin in audio. Most audio programs have a level meter, which indicates if you have clipped. And I'll show you this meter when I cover the software. Before I go on, you should take a quick quiz on the materials I just covered. So why do we want to get as close as possible to one and negative one if clipping can happen? Why don't we just use a low recording level? If the level is set too low, your audio will have a background noise when you turn the volume up to hear it properly. It's impossible to get rid of background noise or the sound that we don't want to record. This background noise is called the noise floor. Again, the noise floor doesn't only happen in audio. In signal theory, the noise floor is the measure of the signal created from the sum of all the noise sources and unwanted signals within a measurement system, where noise is defined as any signal other than the one being monitored. The noise floor can be quiet, as in a recording studio, which ideally should have a noise floor of about 20 decibels, or loud, as in a building near a busy street or one with a lot of equipment running. If your recording level is too low, it's difficult to distinguish between the background noise and the sound you want to record. 
This isn't as problematic as clipping. The information is still recorded, but it means that your recording isn't as clear as it could be. This is why a poor recording level is my second deadly sin in audio. For your assignment this week, you have to record yourself saying your own name. If you have a good level without clipping, your peers will give you three points. If you don't have a good level, you'll only get two points. And if you clip, you will receive one point. There are three ways of changing the volume of the recorded signal. The one we just talked about is setting the recording level, and I'll show you how to do this in software. But you can also change the distance of the microphone to the source of the signal, because again, sound decreases as a function of distance. The further you are from the source of the sound, the softer it will be. If you're the one creating the sound, either through your voice or other movement, you can also change the volume of the sound you are creating. Using a combination of recording level, distance, and volume of the original signal, there are many ways to get a good recording. One other thing you should be aware of when recording your name is the concept of plosives. Plosives are consonants with a burst of air associated with them, such as t, d, or p. Since sound is a measurement of the movement of atoms, these plosives are difficult to record because they'll cause clipping. One option to deal with plosives is to get or make a pop filter, basically a screen of nylon or metal which is placed in front of the microphone. The other option is to move your microphone away from your mouth. When you're recording this week, try different placement of your microphone, change your levels, and adjust the volume of your voice. Then choose the best recording to post.